Chad Padowitz from Talaria Asset Management. Welcome to the Growth Symposium. Thank you. Now, I understand Talaria has quite a unique approach to investing that involves the use of options. Could you expand on that for us? Yeah, we use options as an implementation tool. So the shares we wish to own, we sell put options as a means of entering into positions, which allow us to get them at a cheaper price, as well as getting a significant premium as well. Does that help in terms of managing volatility and and does it have any other benefits in providing income? Yeah, well, there's significant benefits. One is you get paid a premium, so that uh, annualises at north of 15% a year. Uh, secondly, you do it at a buffer. So if the share's trading at $100, we might sell an option at, say, $97, so you get a downside buffer as well. So this combination of income and a buffer allows uh, a lower downside capture risk and hence lowers volatility. And do you combine that with a growth or value approach to global equity selection? Um, well, these options are meant to uh, are used to implement into a long-only portfolio as a means of entering into positions. We are a value fund. And are certain conditions better or worse suited to that entry strategy? Yeah, the greater the level of volatility, the greater um, income we generate, the bigger buffers we're able to access, and many times uh, we're able to actually improve the quality of the portfolio as well from a quality point of view. And what impact has increased inflation or rising bond yields had on the ability to extract returns yeah. broadly for your strategy? Yeah, well, it doesn't have a direct impact on the option side of things. I mean, it's very minor, that, and it's actually positive. However, a l- higher inflation, higher interest rates do affect longer duration assets. We are being a value fund or shorter duration, lower PE type companies, higher free cash flow yield. So we're a beneficiary of that. And what's the ultimate market conditions for your strategy? Yeah, well, ultimate conditions would be reasonable levels of volatility, um, choppy markets going up and down, uh, very strong return markets. We will do okay, but many other strategies might do better because it's an opportunity cost, a very strong market. And obviously, we are a long-only equity fund, so a very weak market is not ideal either. So it provides that kind of lower volatility hedge against a long-only core sort of... Yes, we we will do better in almost every scenario other than a very strong upward trending market. We will still do quite well, absolutely. But anything other than that, we provide a significant uh, lower correlation to other managers because we have these two sources of return, income and capital gains. Is it a paradox that you're able to deliver both income and growth or is that just what we should be seeking from global equity markets anyway. Yeah, well, over time, income, and this is dividend data, uh, is around 50% of long-term returns in the US market over the last 140 years. So dividends in Australia, I think it's close to 100% of returns over the last 20-odd years. So income matters a great deal. We have a process that consistently generates it, but I don't think it's surprising that uh, a better return profile will, will, will be one that combines income and capital. And what's one of the most compelling ideas in your portfolio today? Yeah, currently we like companies uh, specifically in the pharmaceutical space because we think they do very well in this type of economic environment. Uh, Roche is a a, a large cap Swiss-based pharmaceutical business trading on around 8% free cash flow yield uh, with no debt and uh, no real pipeline, uh, no real patent issues until the end of the decade. So we think that stacks up very well in this type of environment. And I know you've been a holder of Alibaba. Any comment on the news uh, recently? Yeah, well, we bought Alibaba because on valuation, it was exceptionally attractive. There was a lot of, and still is, geopolitical considerations and things, but the valuation and the cash flow and the assets were substantially underpriced. The changes that they've announced that they're pursuing now are looking to unlock some of that hidden value. So we're not surprised that that ultimately happened, and we hope to continue to benefit from that. Chad Padowitz, thank you. Great, thank you.